Hi, I'm Gardner, the Linux Gamer, and I think benchmarks suck. <laughs> I've touched on this topic before. Is the debate between console performance a holdover of the 16-bit marketing? But I want to go in-depth with this and explore the origins of our dick-measuring obsession. Also, it's very important to note that if you get offended by something I say in this video, it's okay for people to disagree with each other. That's how we learn and grow, after all. All I ask is that if you want to leave a comment, be civil about it. I can understand that some people probably find the actual process of making a benchmark fun. I personally find it tedious and uninteresting, and that's why you haven't seen much of it on this channel. Benchmarks pose the question, how many frames per second will I get with my GTX Titan X? Or how does the latest Nvidia driver improve micro stuttering? Benchmarks aren't fun. When it comes to gaming, the enjoyment of the game is what's important. How do the mechanics of the game challenge you as a player? How do the aesthetics contribute to the overall narrative? How do players interact with the environment and each other? These are, in my opinion, more useful questions to ask. Benchmarks are presumed to be objective, but I feel much of that equates to nothing more than a logical fallacy. Sure, you can compare one arbitrary number to another, but what good does that actually do? Think about it this way. The Xbox 360 has objectively less powerful hardware than a PC with the minimum specs required to play, let's say, GTA 5. But the game is capable of running on the 360's hardware. Why is this? Besides the fact they're completely different architectures, it's because the developer took the time to optimize their code for the 360 to make it playable. It's not about how powerful your machine is, it's about how well the developers did their job to make a fun and playable game on any system, no matter the hardware. Sure, you can crank up the graphical settings and enjoy ambient occlusion, copious amounts of shaders, or whatever else, but honestly, what does that do to improve or add to your experience? Raise your hand if you've ever played a game and then bought a new graphics card, and played the same game with higher graphical settings. Did the better graphics diminish the fun you had with the game before you got the new card? No, of course not. When Sega launched the Genesis, they had a marketing campaign to go along with it. I believe that the psychology behind modern benchmark fetishization is a direct descendant of the insecurities instilled in gamers by Sega's marketing blitz. Sega does what Nintendo don't. You see, the problem is, raw horsepower is not what's important. I'll say it again. What matters with video games is fun. On paper, the Super Nintendo was overall less powerful than the Sega Genesis, yet it had, in my opinion, the better games. Why? Because they were more fun and focused on mechanics first. The presentation came second, and it's an ethos that Nintendo still adheres to to this day. I would also argue that the worse a console's games were, the more aggressively the manufacturers would push to make you feel insecure about playing your favorite games on their competitors' hardware. The Sega Genesis has blast processing. Super Nintendo doesn't. So what's blast processing do? What if you don't have blast processing? Sega! Now you might be asking how this all relates to Linux gaming. And truthfully, performance matters. I mean, it, it really does. I'm not arguing that it doesn't. I mean, after all, if a game's not playable, then it's not really a game. But I hear so many people spout off bullshit about how indie games that run at a smooth and consistent 30 frames per second complain about input lag and other such nonsense. Listen, what I care about is having fun. Arguing about numbers simply isn't. I won't ever be playing the Windows releases of any games that I own, so I literally could not care if the Linux version runs at a slightly slower frame rate. Benchmarks suck. Well, that's my thesis. What do you think? Leave me a comment down below or on Twitter at the Linux Gamer. If you believe in the work that I do, you might consider helping the channel grow with a monthly contribution over on Patreon or LibrePay. If you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. And as always, thank you so much for watching.